In this video, we're going to learn how to make a countdown timer in Python. The first thing we'll do is import from the time module the sleep function. The sleep function will allow us to pause our program for one second at a time. Next, we'll prompt the user for the number of seconds for the countdown timer. So we'll call the input function and we'll pass it the string enter seconds as an argument. This will prompt the user with the text enter seconds. The string the user enters is going to be returned from the input function, but we want to convert that string to an int. So we'll have here int. Then we'll store the resulting int into the variable seconds with seconds is equal to. Now for the countdown timer to work, the number of seconds entered must be greater than zero. So we'll check for that. We'll have here if seconds is greater than zero, then we'll have our countdown timer logic. Otherwise, we'll have an else case and we'll output an error message. We'll have here print seconds must be greater than zero. So if seconds is less than or equal to zero, we're going to output this error message here due to this else case. Otherwise, what we'll do is have a loop and this loop is going to produce our countdown timer. So we'll have here while seconds is greater than or equal to zero. So the timer is going to continue so long as seconds is greater than or equal to zero. And each time in the loop body here, we'll output the number of seconds remaining and we'll subtract one from seconds with seconds minus equals one. So initially seconds is going to be an integer that's greater than zero. And here, this loop is going to continue so long as seconds is still greater than or equal to zero. And each time we'll output the number of seconds remaining and we'll subtract one from seconds. So eventually seconds is going to be less than zero and that's when the counter is going to stop. What we'll also do is sleep for one second. So here we'll have sleep one. What this will do is pause the execution of the program for one second. So each iteration of this loop is going to take one second. We could test out our program. We'll save it and here we'll run it. We'll enter in five and we get five, four, three, two, one, zero. So, so far our countdown timer is working. One thing we could do to make our timer more interesting is output the number of minutes and seconds remaining in a formatted way. So the first thing we'll do is call div mod and we'll pass this function seconds and 60 as arguments. What this function is going to do is divide seconds by 60 and return the quotient and the remainder. So we'll have here mins and then comma sex is equal to the result of calling div mod. What this will do is give us back the number of minutes and the number of seconds. Because if we had, let's say 122, total seconds remaining. If we divide that by 60, we'll get back two, remainder two. And the idea is that two would be assigned to mins and two would be assigned to sex. So what we could then do is format the time. We'll have here, time is equal to, and we'll have a string and we'll use the string format method to format the string. So we'll have dot format, and we'll pass the function mins and sex because these are the two numbers we're going to put into the string. Then inside this string, we'll have two placeholders. We'll have open curly brace, close curly brace, and colon 02d, and then colon, and then another placeholder with open curly brace, colon 02d. So these are going to be the placeholders where mins and sex are going to be inserted. And the d means we're going to insert an int and zero two means the integer is going to have up to two leading zeros. So now instead of outputting the raw number of seconds, we'll output this nicely formatted string. So we'll have here print and time. Now, if we save our program and run it and enter in five seconds, we now get this nicely formatted string. And we can notice that we have up to two leading zeros in the number of minutes and seconds. Now, every time the print function outputs a string, 
it also outputs a new line character after the string. So we get here each time on a new line, five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, and so on. What we could do is alter the character that the print function outputs after outputting the string. What we could supply is another argument. We could have here end is equal to, and we can modify the character that the print function outputs. So instead of new line, we could have here backslash R. This is the carriage return character. It will cause any new output to begin at the beginning of the existing line. So what this will do is cause each time to be output on the same line. We could save this and try it out. So here we'll enter in, let's say 125 seconds, and we'll get here two minutes and five seconds, two minutes and four seconds, and so on. And we can also see how the time transitions to one minute and 59 seconds and so on as it goes down. And because we're using the carriage return character, each time is output on the same line. So this is how we can build a countdown timer in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.